Hello, this is Dawn Adolfson, and I am making this video here to introduce you to my favorite app, Liquid Text. It is currently only available on Apple iPad. However, I just read on the website that they are working on a Windows edition that I think would be great for Microsoft Surface or other Windows-based tablets. Um, I'm not sure about Android just yet. Uh, but I do run it here on my iPad and I love using my Apple Pencil along with it. You do need an iPad Pro to use the pencil, by the way. So when you first come into the app, this is the main screen. I like to organize everything I'm working on by folders and by the course. And then I'll archive them when I'm done with them. But we're going to jump into one of the courses I'm taking. And my favorite thing to do is to create a document for each week of the class. That way I know exactly where things are organized and I can get back to them. So we're going to jump into what I've done recently. And it looks like a lot, but I'm going to walk you through what all of this is right now. So on the left hand side, you'll see these are the documents that the instructor assigned for us to read this week. What I usually do on Monday is I upload all of them into here. And it's really easy to upload. You can come into this plus at the top here to see all of the documents and you can quickly add them either from a URL that you have directly from the PDF or if you have your documents and your files. I also use AirDrop a lot so I'll pull it up on my Mac computer and AirDrop it right to my iPad and I can put it right in the liquid text or I can share it directly from Canvas into liquid text. So there's multiple different ways you can upload your documents. And then I organize them into here. This is the doc pane. This is where you can see all of the articles at once. And you can actually view more than one article at the same time. So if I come in here and open more than one article, I can look at them on the exact same screen. So you can see I'm controlling the one on the top or in the middle. I can use um, the pinch to zoom or zoom out like you would for a normal photo on your iPad. There we go. I also like to look at just two or one at the same time because my iPad is smaller, but if you're trying to compare multiple articles and find similarities or differences, compare and contrast, that's very helpful. But then when you're looking at just any article, I like to bring it up nice and big and then I can start reading. So what this is where my Apple Pencil comes in help because I can highlight everything with the controls on the bottom. So you'll see there's a pen where I can write anything I want on the screen. Just like that. I can change the colors. I can use just a regular highlighter and I can also use text select. So you don't have to have an Apple Pencil to make this work. The text select is my favorite tool right now because I can select anything that I want. I can draw these little dots around and I can highlight something. I use different colors when I study. So yellow I like to use for main ideas. The purple I like to use for anything that's related to a study or the author's purpose. And green I like to use for examples, etc. I'm sure you have your own method. But what's great about using text select, which you can do with just your finger as well, is that at the top you'll see highlight view. This is one of my favorite features. So once I finish reading an article and I want to go back to it and review for discussion or to find something and I can't remember where it was, I just tap on highlight view and I can squish the screen together. What I'm doing is I'm pinching my fingers to kind of squish everything together. And if you notice what's happening is it's only showing me what it was highlighted on the screen. So it jumps ahead, you'll see page two, and then I'm on page three, page four. I can quickly see just what I've highlighted or what I've taken excerpts of. Awesome. That's the highlight view, one of my favorites. Let me take that off. Awesome. All right, let me go up. Okay. And then what you'll also see on the left-hand side there is I've written a note, and there's that little blue arrow. If I tap on that blue arrow, you'll notice something, that it automatically uploaded another article. That's because I made a connection between the two. So I wrote, read this article by Mayer and then another one by Clark, and they were talking about the same thing. 
So I wanted to connect the two so later I can reference the two. I'm going to erase that to show you. So all I have to do is to use the pen tool and just draw a line between the two and it will automatically create this little moving line. And that just shows me that I've made a connection. So even if I'm somewhere else and I click on the arrow again, it'll automatically bring me back to that connection. This is really nice when you're reading or rereading later on or studying, preparing for discussion, preparing for class. That way you can kind of remember where things were said so you can quote them. I have found this very helpful for literature reviews because I can keep track of things that I want to remember for later. Awesome. So that's how you look at the articles. The other thing is I'm going to drag this over and if you see on the right hand side, oh there's something out there in the middle of nowhere. It's okay. This is the note board. So this is kind of if you were taking, if you're doing this on paper, you'd have your articles printed out and perhaps your notebook open so you can take notes. This is pretty much the same idea. So you can have your article on the left hand side and then your note board on the right hand side. And this is where you can have all your excerpts. So if you, I'm zooming in here, all of these little boxes are either text boxes. So actually this red one here is one of the discussion questions that the teacher posted. So I wanted to keep those in mind. I plopped all those into my board so I knew what to look for. And then I write my notes below them. So for this one, you can see that I have a little note next to it that has a quote. I can go back and see exactly what I was thinking about that I wanted to remember for that question. Awesome. Or down here, you can see that I've taken an excerpt. So this yellow box right here, that's the discussion question from the teacher. This box right here is actually an excerpt from the article. On the bottom, it says it's from Hal Jung, page two. But if I also click on the little carrot again, it shows me exactly where it was. Hold on. There it is. It'll draw a line over it so I can go back and see it. What's really cool about when you have excerpts that you've taken and put it on the board is that you can connect them to different pieces. So if you notice when I move it close to the question, it kind of makes this little bubble in the middle. I guess that's where the liquid text comes from. And I can make a connection between the two. I do that often so I can connect ideas or put things together. I did a lot over here when I was summarizing this one article on Mayor Six Principles where the author organized the article in this way where there was a principle, some research, some psychology and application. So what I did is I plopped in all of the principles and put it back there. And then I have all of the, the uh, excerpts in the middle and all of those little carrots right here bring me back exactly where it was in the article so I can go back to it any time, which it's right over here. These are just different ways I like to organize um, when I'm studying and reading articles. I also like to take any definitions, put them in orange, and organize them together by article. So here's on the left all the definitions by Clark, and then I have from some other articles. I can move them around as much as I want. I can even move a group of things around. So that's really helpful for making mind maps and things like that. Whoops, gotta be careful because you can move things everywhere. Put that back there. What's also very nice is diagrams. So this is actually a diagram that was in the article and I can show you again where it is. There it is, plops right back up. And I can draw right on top of it. So if you've seen, I've made some notes here that I can go back to and just, I'll put that back. There we go. I can highlight on top of it. I can put quotes right on top, like I've done down here below. And it just helps me organize everything together. Zooming out again. Sometimes I mix quotes along with notes. So here I was just organizing all of Gagne's events, nine events that were quoted in an article. There it is going back. And generally that's the note board. I've seen different strategies here. I've seen some people that do a lot more handwriting on the screen with the pencil, or I like to take a lot more excerpts and kind of organize them and color code them, put them together. 
What's new is now you can increase the font size. So sometimes I make things bigger. So if there's a question and an answer, I can put those together, etc. Um, so this is how I like to read all of my articles right here on Liquid Text. I don't have to print anything out. I can get back to them very quickly. Um, some of these are PDFs that the teacher's given, or sometimes they're actually websites. Looks like that's a doc file. Where's the website? This one, this was a blog post uh, that the uh, instructor wanted us to read. So I went to the website and exported it as a PDF so I can have it in here. But you can also import websites as well. Sometimes it doesn't format exactly, so I like to export as a PDF before I put it in there. But generally that is liquid text. The question mark in the top right hand corner kind of shows you a little bit more of all the different features that you can do. And it has quick little videos of how to do all of the things that I just showed you. So if you wanted to download the app, you can just come in here and look at the help videos that they have. And I also recommend that you get the pro version. There is a student discount, and if I remember, it was about $20. I know that sounds like a lot for an app, but for me, it has been worth it, and that's the student discount. So when you sign up to get the app, make sure you look for the education or student discount when you download it. Um, you can download the trial version and play with it, but you just have limited features. But generally, this is liquid text. Um, if you have questions or you just want to look at it with me in person or um, have any questions, just let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions or tell you a little bit more how I do my reading. But I hope you find this app helpful. If you download it and love it, I'd love to hear from you and hear your strategies for organizing and reading all the material. But until next time, I'll talk to you later.